Point Church. Welcome. Merry Christmas to you and your families. I hope that you guys are having just an awesome Christmas. If you have kids, I hope they didn't wake you up too early like mine did to open up their presents because, you know, Christmas morning, kids, for whatever reason, they want to get up super early. But I hope you guys are having a very Merry Christmas today. Hey, we've got an awesome Christmas service for you today in... I'm not going to give it away, but Pastor Ray has gone and, and done some pretty awesome things in this message. So uh, just get ready for that and be excited. But before we jump into our message today, we've got a special song for you guys that we're all going to worship to together. And I know in my house, it's always been a family tradition to sing one particular song. And I, and I could probably guess the same for a lot of you. So before we jump in, once again, from the Point Church staff here, we hope you're having a very Merry Christmas this morning. And let's jump into worship. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing, and heaven and heaven and nature. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ. While fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy. So Merry Christmas morning from New York. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. Through Him all things were made, and without Him nothing was made that was made. In Him was light, and His life was the light of man. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Today we celebrate Christmas in a unique way. So sometimes we have this false distinction between the sacred and the secular, or maybe between the war between Santa Claus and Jesus. 
but I want us to go today to some very special places in this city and also close to home as we talk about this very special day. Because unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. That's God's news for us this Christmas season. And so now we want to celebrate today with you in your home in the places that are special to you. Your tree is special. Just as these lights decorate this plaza, just as these lights decorate this tree, you place special emphasis in your home, on your tree, in the packages wrapped around your tree, in the meal you prepared for you to share with family today, or maybe many meals in the days to come. And so you prepared meals, you prepared packages. Enjoy these special moments of the day. And join us as we talk about how God lights up the world and He uses us as not just people that are on this earth, but co-creators with Him who've been made to be the pinnacle of His creation because God became a human being like you and me. And so because of that, we celebrate this Christmas day. Join us on a great time as we do Christmas in New York and close to home with you. So while the most famous Christmas tree lighting in America might be in front of the White House or in front of the Rockefeller Center where we began today, this is actually the site of the very first Christmas tree lighting in all of America. In December of 1912, a horse-drawn truck brought a 60-foot Christmas tree just like this from the Adirondacks down here in the Manhattan. It was adorned with 2,300 lights for the very first Christmas tree here at Madison Grant Park in New York City. Isn't it amazing that the baby born in a manger, surrounded by animals and shepherds coming in from the field, could be also honored in such a powerful way as this beautiful architecture here at St. Patrick's Cathedral. This is a site of state funerals. John F. Kennedy was memorialized here in our own national history. But the baby that was born in a manger came to save the world, and he made the world to save the world. But the world is not the dirt or the stones even of this cathedral. He's made you and me the pinnacle of his creation. And he wants us to co-create a great life and a great Christmas today with you and your family. So this is Times Square. This is arguably the most lit place in all the world for all kinds of reasons. There's gonna be a ball to drop back here next weekend. As a matter of fact, we're gonna have a special service on New Year's Day that we're gonna invite you to after the ball drops, one service at 11 o'clock. But for today, here's the thing I want us to understand as we think about the light of Christ living inside of those of us who know Him as Savior and Lord and the light of Christ in your home. Today, shine His light brightly as you spend time together on this Christmas day because your home is lit too. Perhaps the most interesting place in New York that marries the idea of the secular with the sacred is this place. We're in the chapel at the General Theological Seminary in New York City. It's in a division of New York called Chelsea. See, there was a gentleman by the name of Clement Clark Moore who was a very wealthy guy who owned 66 to 70 blocks of what is today part of the richest part of Manhattan. And he was also a professor of biblical languages, of Greek and of Hebrew, here at General Theological Seminary. What makes it interesting is that on December the 23rd, 1824, he published a poem in the Troy, New York newspaper called A Visit from St. Nicholas. You know it is this, "'Twas the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse." That's right. See a professor of biblical languages, married to a woman named Catherine, with nine children in their household, created a poem that transformed our society. Isn't it interesting that that came from a place of faith? Romans chapter 2 says that our consciences even bear witness to the fact that there is a God. 
So to me, one of the most fascinating things is that a professor of biblical languages here at this beautiful seminary campus in New York was the person that authored this poem about a Santa Claus who was good and wanted us to be good and brought us gifts and came and was cheerful and joyful. That to me points straight back to the one joy giver of all creation, Jesus Christ. The one who made the world, remember, came to save the world. And everything inside of us, even, as it says in Romans chapter 2, that our consciences bear witness to the fact that there is a God who has put a spirit inside of us that longs for Him at Christmas time. And it's fascinating to me, and I hope it is to you, that the professor of biblical languages, Clement Clark Moore, also became the author of Twas the Night Before Christmas. You see, when we practice Christmas traditions, it's not so much that God is against, against Santa Claus or Jesus is against Christmas trees. Instead, there's a marriage of everything that God has made. And echoing out of our hearts are the goodness and the graciousness and the kindness and the love of God. Thank God for Clark Clement Moore, this professor of biblical languages, a real estate magnate who founded Chelsea here in New York but also was professor at this campus until the time of his death. It's a privilege to be able to be here today, thanks to those people at General Theological Seminary who made it possible. So we're standing here in front of Ground Zero. This is where the Twin Towers stood and where so many people lost their lives, not only on that day, but people that gave their lives to go in and rescue and help them afterwards and to clean up afterwards and all of the PTSD that goes along with that. So we often say, never forget. I wanna flip the script today on this Christmas morning and turn this into a memory that can be pleasant for you. Instead of never forget, always remember. Always remember how precious life is. Always remember how to do the things that Mary did on that very first day. In Luke chapter two, it says that when the shepherds start showing up and the wise men are gonna be coming at some point and they're around the manger, it says Mary treasured these things in her heart. Pastor Justin referenced that back on our night of worship. So while you're sitting around your tree or around your table, you're unwrapping gifts with one another, treasure these memories, treasure the look of the child who opens up the gift that's exactly what they wanted or giving something to someone that was very special to you and the, the look on their eyes of surprise because we do need never to forget but we need to always remember to treasure these days in our hearts just like Mary did on that first Christmas day. So here on April the 30th, 1789, George Washington was sworn in as the first president of the United States. This was the first capital. And then he walked down the street to worship at St. Paul's, which you have seen in previous video or you will see in later video. Hey, so welcome on this Christmas day to St. Paul's Chapel, built in 1766. It's actually right next to Ground Zero. That's important for what happened right after 9-11. But before that, a long time before that, in 1789, George Washington came to worship here in special services right after he was sworn in as the first president of the United States. See, when Washington was sworn in as president, New York was the capital of the United States. Washington, D.C. had yet been to be built. So this is where George Washington worshiped and prayed when he was in New York. And after 9-11, this building, which was right next door to Ground Zero, was not damaged at all. An amazing providence of God. Because over the weeks and months afterwards, as rescue workers and recovery workers were helping people to recover, as they were helping to unpile everything from all those who lost their lives on 9-11, this church was used as a place to minister to them. What a powerful ministry and a powerful church that has existed for hundreds of years. Merry Christmas from St. Paul's Chapel. So believe it or not, we are here at One World Trade Center. This is a mall. As a matter of fact, it's called the Westfield Shopping Mall in New York. It's a little bit bigger than the mall in Gastonia, North Carolina, right? 
So you've spent a lot of money, maybe not in malls, but you've been on Amazon or eBay or whatever buying Christmas. Money's certainly a big part of Christmas. So let's talk about money for a little bit. So Jesus says in Matthew 6, 24, in the verses following, no person can serve two masters. Either he will hate the one and be devoted to the one other or love the one and despise the other. He says, you cannot serve God and money. So what does that mean for you and me this Christmas season? Well, we spent a lot of money that we either had or are going to spend on credit in order to pay for the things that we got. Enjoy the things that you bought. But as we move into the new year, it's important for us to understand and to remember that it's either God or it's money. If money comes over to God, we will never have enough. John D. Rockefeller is famous for saying, all I ever want is just a little bit more than I'm ever gonna have. But with Christ, with the Christ child at Christmas, we have everything. We have everything we need and he promises us that he's gonna take care of us and that he's given us all things for enjoyment. And in a life like this, enjoy this day. Enjoy this Christmas day. Enjoy the things that God has given to us. Remember that the wise men bought their best gifts and brought their best gifts to him. I'm sure they cost a lot of money. I'm sure yours did too. It's a demonstration of your love for others. But how do you get control of your money? Never let money control your heart. Never let money control your heart. Instead, let your heart, transformed by the Christ child, transform your life by making good decisions with your things, your money, your time, your talents, and your treasures. Merry Christmas. So we're here in the graveyard of Trinity Church. You might remember Trinity Church is the place where Nicolas Cage ran with his girlfriend in the National Treasure, Abby, to save the National Treasure. I don't know if that's actually down there or not. This church is actually built on the site of the one that was destroyed in 1776. Over my left shoulder to your right is Alexander Hamilton's grave. All of you Hamilton fans remember that. Hamilton helped to start the First Bank of the United States. We're right here in the middle of Wall Street where all the stuff happens to transact around the world. Somebody said at some point that whenever a president or a world leader or a world event sneezes, that Wall Street gets a cold. Or when Wall Street sneezes, the world gets a cold. So we want to get back to scripture. Let's go back to Jesus Christ who made everything and came to save the world. In Colossians chapter one, it says, by him were all things created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and in him all things consist or all things hold together. So as we reach the conclusion of our tour of New York, one of the things we wanted to say here very specifically is, is that the one who made this world again came to save this world. And all these things were made by people like you and me who are co-creators with God, or co-creators of our own temples, our own destinies, on architectural structures, but God gave us the ability to do that. So our standing here today, Alexander Hamilton, who created the Bank of the United States and helped to form the very first government, signed the Declaration of Independence, Robert Fulton, who made the first steamboat, John Watts, who was an important recorder and protector and member of the United States Congress, all of us were created for God's purposes. All the people that are here and interred here will one day rise to meet our Savior in heaven, either to go in heaven or depart from him forever to be in hell. Jesus came to make heaven possible for all of us, but he also came to give us a life and a life more abundant. John chapter 10 verse 10 says, Jesus came to give life and life more abundant. As a matter of fact, as Paul was writing to one of his protégés, he says, God has given us all things for our enjoyment. So today, as you celebrate Christmas, remember that he's put us on this earth for a purpose, to love one another and to fulfill his purposes for us, for salvation, for celebration, for reconciliation, to make the world a better place until he comes back to make it again. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for these places and these symbols of what you've already placed in our hearts. Even as we put our hands over our heart or we feel the breath coursing in our lungs, we are reminded of how precious life actually is. Thank you, God, for Jesus. Thank you for Christmas. Thank you for making all things. Thank you for giving us the ability to co-create 
and make things and establish things and to do things and to make these that are watching and everyone that we'll see in these days to come. Thank you, Lord, that this place is called Trinity Church, a reminder constantly that you are Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and that you are convicting us in our hearts this Christmas season to draw closer to the child in this holy place, because ultimately that manger in Bethlehem was the holiest place of all. Thank you, Father, for what you've done for us. Thank you for making this a very Merry Christmas. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And let me say to you, as we conclude this day today, he made all things, including you and me and the stuff you're unwrapping around your tree. Celebrate Christmas. Remember the things are to glorify the one who made all things. Have a great day and Merry Christmas. So Ellis Island, Roosevelt Island, and the Statue of Liberty is behind us. So many people came to the new world and they came on the base of this promise that's at the base of the Statue of Liberty. Give me your tired and your poor, those yearning to be free. Ladies and gentlemen, it was for freedom that Christ came to set us free. Therefore, stand firm. Are you with Christ or are you against Him? Is He the Lord of your life and the master of your life? Or are you, or your money, or your position, or your possessions, or whatever? Ultimately, Christ wants all of you. And as a matter of fact, as we stand firm in the freedom that Christ gives us, that's the place of peace. In an obscure piece of scripture in the last part of the book of Ephesians, the Apostle Paul says, stand in the shoes of the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace is what we proclaim today because the Prince of Peace has come. He's the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, but he's also the Prince of Peace, meaning he has all authority, but he has all peace available to us too. It's interesting as we look at the gospel of peace and what that means, specifically the shoes of the gospel of peace. They were like track spikes. You see, peace is not an absence of wind or an absence of rain, an absence of difficult times and circumstances. Peace is a place where we stand. And ultimately Christ came to make it possible for his peace to rule in our hearts. And it's something that only you can decide. Only you can decide to make him Lord and the master of your life. Ultimately, it was for freedom that Christ came to set us free, as it says in Galatians. But only you can take the stance of peace by standing under his authority, by living for him and by walking in freedom. As we draw this Christmas service to a close, hey, listen, enjoy your gifts today. Enjoy your presence. Remember, God made all things for our, our enjoyment, and He provided all those things. But today, ultimately, what's the stance of Christ in your heart? What is your stance of Christ? Either you are standing under Him, or you're standing under your own authority. Either you're following Christ, or you're following Satan. Following Jesus, or following the devil. Today, what if today could be the place where you take your stance of peace? Right now, I want to offer you Jesus Christ. How do you do that? I want to invite you to wherever you are. You can bow your heads and close your eyes or with eyes wide open, say to him, Dear Lord, thank you for coming to save me. Thank you, Christ of Christmas, for living to be a man, a perfect man, and to pay the sinless sacrifice on a tree, not a Christmas tree, but the tree that bore the weight of my sin and the sins of the whole world. Dear God, would you please make me yours today? I give my life to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And today, if you've said that, we invite you to take a step. Perhaps if you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, you can put a comment in the section and tell us that you've chosen to cross the lines of faith and to say you're standing with Christ in the place of peace. You see, those that came from far away came searching for peace. And this is the greatest nation on earth still. But ultimately, the greatest place is for you to be standing in the peace of Jesus Christ. Born in a manger, who came to this world to live and die for you and for me. Merry Christmas.
But the very best places to celebrate Christmas are the places close to us. Hey, listen, I put McAdenville, North Carolina over and above anything we have seen or anything we will see. What a beautiful town this is. It's been redone by the Starfield family and it's such a great place to come and celebrate Christmas. Where you get out of your car and you walk through town and maybe you eat at a restaurant, you certainly enjoy the lights that are around us, on the hills, on the lights, and on people's houses. But where do you celebrate Christmas? Where does Christmas feel most at home to you? It's in places like McAdenville, in our community, in our church, in our homes, around our Christmas trees, around our table. But ultimately, Christmas is a place that we make in our heart. Christ wants you and me to make his home our hearts. And he only comes in by invitation. So today, as we celebrate Christmas, as you watch this at whatever time of day you're watching it, today is the day when God wants you to make a decision. See, the Father has sent the Son to be the Savior of the world. Today, in the city of David, a Savior is born to you, which is Christ the Lord. Have you accepted Him and made your heart His home? God wants that more than anything. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the privilege of being able to live this life. Thank you for beautiful places and spaces and memories. But right now, we pray for each one of us that before we click off, that we would make our hearts your home. And how do we do that? Simply by saying to you, dear Jesus, I give you my life. I'm following you now. Please help me to live this life for you and for others loving you with all of our heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength, and loving our neighbor as ourselves. Thank you, Lord, for making Christmas possible, understanding that Christmas made Easter possible, and that Easter made eternal life possible for us. Not just there and then, but here and now, with Christ at the center of our lives, in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Merry Christmas from McAdenville, North Carolina. All right, everyone, that's the message for today. It's just always awesome to see where Pastor Ray goes every year for Christmas. And it's really great to see all the things around the world that uh, pertain to the birth and the life of Jesus Christ and how we can celebrate them in different ways all around the world. And, and it was just a great uh, a message to hear from Pastor Ray in New York City as he visited all the places around town that uh, pertain to the birth and life of Jesus Christ. So from the Point Church staff here and from all of us, uh, leaders here at the church. We just want to wish all of you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And we just cannot wait to see your faces next week when we are here in the building for one service at 11 a.m. on New Year's Day. That's January 1st at 11 a.m. one service. So again, Merry Christmas from everyone here at the Point Church. And we hope you guys have a wonderful New Year's. But it is about that time for me to go get breakfast with my family. So see you guys next week.